from Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter 4, text 34. Tadviddhi pranipatena Pariprasne na sevaya Upadekshanti te gyanam Gyani nas tatva darshinaha Tadviddhi pranipatena Pari prashne na sevaya Upadekshanti te gyanam Gyani nas tatva darshinaha Tadviddhi pranipate na Pari prashne na sevaya Upadekshanti te gyanam Gyani nas tatva darshinaha Please repeat after me the meanings of the different words. Tat, that knowledge of different sacrifices. Vidhi, try to understand. Pranipatena, by approaching a spiritual master. Pariprasnena, by submissive inquiries. Sevaya by the rendering of service. Upadekshanti initiate. Te unto you. Gyanam knowledge. Gyanina the self realized. Tattva truth. Darshinaha the seers. Translation, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. Please repeat the translation. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self-realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The path of spiritual realization is undoubtedly difficult. The Lord therefore advises us to approach a bona fide spiritual master in the line of disciplic succession from the Lord Himself. No one can be a bona fide spiritual master without following this principle of disciplic succession. The Lord is the original spiritual master and a person in the disciplic succession can convey the message of the Lord as it is to His disciple. No one can be spiritually realized by manufacturing his own process as is the fashion of the foolish pretenders. The Bhagavatam says, Dharmam hi sakshad Bhagavat Pranitam. The path of religion is directly enunciated by the Lord. Therefore, mental speculation or dry arguments cannot help one progress in spiritual life. One has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge. Such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender. And one should serve the spiritual master like a menial servant without false prestige. Satisfaction of the self-realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. Inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission and service, inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective. One must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. In this verse, both blind following and absurd inquiries are condemned. 
one should not only hear submissively from the spiritual master but one must also get a clear understanding from him in submission and service and inquiries a bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind toward the disciple therefore when the student is submissive and is always ready to render service the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect so as we are going to the various important verses of the bhagavad gita today we are discussing the importance of a spiritual guide in your own personal life in this fourth chapter which is entitled transcendental knowledge sri krishna is giving various kind of information to arjun and at this juncture he is advising him that you just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master inquire from him submissively and render service unto him these two things are required at the same time you have to ask him questions and you have to render some service the self realized soul tattvadarshi he only can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth so the way in which the knowledge about the truth is imparted is given example of his spiritual master and in this way this succession goes directly to the lord himself the lord is the original spiritual master we come across this quotation krishnam vande jagat guru so how is the lord the original spiritual master because he is the original source of this knowledge and it is said that no one can be a spiritually realized soul by manufacturing his own process you cannot say that i have come across this truth by my own means this cannot be possible you have to get this knowledge from this bona fide parampara or disciplic succession we can understand this principle by uh, in our everyday life by understanding <coughs> how somebody gets an engineering or a medical degree if at all somebody wants to become a doctor he has to go to a college which is connected to a university he has to learn the subject under the guidance of a person who has himself learned this subject under somebody else so the person who is who has taken admission to a medical school he can be a he can be said to be a shishya or a disciple the person from whom he is learning is his spiritual master and the way in which this knowledge is given it can be compared to the disciplic succession so if one person says i got all my books from the market i purchased all the medical books i read them in my home i have mastered them all i know all the subjects thoroughly therefore i can claim to be a doctor but no one will believe him because there is nobody to certify whether this person has really assimilated the knowledge so similar is the case in spiritual life you may say that all the books which are required for spiritual life are available in the market but just by taking just by purchasing them and by reading them you cannot get real knowledge two things are required humble inquiry pari prashnena and sevaya rendering some service so therefore the shrimad bhagavatam says dharmam hi sakshat bhagavat pranitam the path of religion is directly enunciated by the lord so this is the main definition of religion today we find this very word religion it arouses different kinds of sentiments some say that this is a very outdated concept we don't need religion at all what they mean is the way religion is conveyed to the people nowadays that kind of religion is not needed or 
people might say we do we want a different kind of religion the kind of religion which is prevalent nowadays just causes tension just causes discontent causes disharmony so what is the exact kind of religion what we which we want which is needed the bhagavatam says dharmam hi sakshat bhagavat pranitam no one no one except the lord himself can <coughs> propound the principles of religion this is the main concept which is said here in fact the bhagavatam says not even the great sages not even the great demigods no one knows actually what the, great, the principles of religion are except the supreme personality of lord himself so mental speculation or dry arguments cannot help one progress in spiritual life two things are given here mental speculation if we don't know what is the actual truth we try to speculate on our own just like we are all sitting in this temple room if there is some noise outside a big sound we may try to guess was it was it a bang was it a firecracker or was it a crash whatever happened so in this way based on our own intelligence based on our own experience based on our mental capacity we try to speculate and therefore we find many people they are very qualified from the material point of view they may have big big degrees they may be leaders in their own fields of politics social service material science or whatever economics but in the spiritual arena they cannot use this mental speculation to understand what god is so therefore people say that mostly god is a concept which arrow which which came because people wanted some kind of support man has to have some kind of support in life and therefore he has invented this idea of god there are some poets who say it is such a beautiful concept they agree it's a very beautiful concept and they say man has to have some kind of solace there should be somebody who will who will try to wipe away your tears therefore when every day brings its agony every day is full of suffering you have this kind of concept of god okay okay no problem today was a very bad day but tomorrow this god will give you something so in in their respective ways of understanding who god is they try to speculate there are even some scientists who claim that their astronauts using their own engineering technology they have gone way high up in the space and they haven't haven't seen any god so everyone says god is up there but they don't find any god there so in this way we either go on speculating or we go on arguing so prabhupada says this kind of mental speculation and this kind of dry arguments you can never know in fact most of the knowledge which is gathered today is in the form of surveys you may find that such and such type of people who have such and such source of income how do they spend their money so nowadays even in the newspapers they ask your opinions such and such thing such thing has happened in the government do you think it's good or do you think it's bad this person who is a film star he has been caught with some arms is this good or is this bad today's film songs are very vulgar are they good or are they bad so in this way in this kali yuga which is said by the very scriptures prayena alpayush sabhya kala vasmin yuge jana mand sumand matayo mand bhagya upadruta what a irony this same age which is said by the scriptures that people are very short lived prayena alpayusha sabhya kala vasmin yuge jana mand sumand matayo they are very very lazy on this path of self realization sumand matayo very ill equipped this brain cells gray cells are very very less 
there is not there is very less gray matter to understand spiritual life mand bhagya they are so unfortunate and upadruta they are always disturbed by so many other kinds of factors and still they want to understand just by getting each other's views so if out of 100 people 60 people say that such and such thing has happened is good so it is accepted as good similarly they just ask people what do you think what is your idea of god and people say my idea of god is a person who is all loving my idea of god is a person who is full of light who is full of knowledge it is it may be very interesting to note that some years ago a survey it is very popular in america and many thousands of people are asked what are your chances of going to heaven and what are your chances of going to hell of the people surveyed everyone almost had so many vices so many bad habits but almost 70 to 80 percent people said their chances of going to heaven are extraordinary brilliant they had great hope that somehow or other they are going to heaven and most of them thought that their favorite hobby was baseball or watching tv and hell means a place where such kind of activities are not allowed so the only conception of hell for them was where my favorite pastime of watching tv or doing something else which i like very much is not allowed that's their conception of hell but does it really matter does it really matter whether you think heaven is like this hell is like this or not it is like going to a jail in a jail everybody is a criminal and asking the criminals what is your idea of a ideal government what is your idea how should the police function what do you think will be the answer the only answer the criminals will give is the police i like is who never catch me so similarly when we try to understand god by our own mental speculation it is something which just our own senses our own mind or our own false ego dictate and therefore this kind of this process of gathering knowledge is thoroughly discouraged one has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender and one should serve the spiritual master like a menial servant without false prestige this is something which is very hard to swallow we are all so conditioned that simply we don't like to serve somebody much less as a menial servant but the fact remains that the satisfaction of the self realized spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life this one point is so nicely explained in the lives of our vaishnava acharyas those great devotees who transform the lives of millions of people they themselves in their own spiritual life they showed what is this actual surrender for example in the life of sri ramanuj acharya he had to go to his spiritual master and very humbly request him can you please give me the diksha mantra can you please initiate me and that person said well you have to wait next time again he very humbly went and said can you please initiate me this time also he said wait he had to go to him for 17 times to ask for initiation and he was just testing him and and the 18th occasion he agreed similarly was the case of the that great gaudiya vaishnava acharya who was the founder acharya of the gaudiya math shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati goswami maharaj his father was bhakti vinod thakur who was accepted as a great vaishnava but although his father was himself in a capacity to initiate he told him you have to take initiation from gaur kishor baba ji who was another great vaishnava acharya so he went to him to gaur kishor baba ji and said my father has instructed that i should take initiation from you 
He said, since I am a Babaji, I don't have any need for disciples. I don't want any glory. I don't want anything else. I am not going to initiate anyone. So he thought, this is strange. My father has instructed me that I should go to this person and take initiation. And he is refusing. So he came back to his father and said, Gorkishwar Maharaj saying that, is saying that he is not initiating. His father got so angry. Bhakti Thakur said, if you can't take initiation from a Vaishnava Sadhu, your life is worthless. You don't enter my house unless you take initiation. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he had no choice. He thought, if my father is saying that my life is worthless, and if my Guru Maharaj is saying that he will not initiate me, so what is the use of this miserable body? I'll just go and drown myself. So in that utter state of utter frustration, he was really going to drown himself and without his knowledge, Gaur Kishore Maharaj was also passing by. And he saw that he is the same person who is trying to now commit suicide. So as he was about to jump, he said, hey, wait, wait, stop. Why are you killing yourself? So he said, because you will not initiate me and my father is saying my, my body is worthless unless I take initiation. So seeing his sincere desire, Gaur Kishore Maharaj, he decided, okay, I can initiate you. And he was the only one person he initiated in all his life. Similarly, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati himself, he was also preaching in Calcutta and the great spiritual master, the founder Acharya of ISKCON, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, he was going on that road with a friend and his friend said, there is a great sadhu who has come here, why don't you come and see him? As usual, many people say, I don't have time for some sadhus, I am busy in my career or my family life. So, his name at that time was Abhay Charan Day. So he said, look, I have seen enough of the sadhus. The year was 1922, so India was under British rule. So he said, what have these sadhus done for India? They are, the, all, the only thing they do is just beg, just sit down and chant some mantra. So what is the use of these sadhus for us? But he said, no, no, this person is really very interesting person, he is very learned. I am sure you will really benefit by seeing him. And Abhay Charan was saying, no, 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 I am not interested. So everybody was very amused to see two friends fighting over this small matter and his friend was pushing and Abhay Charan was trying to just saying, leave, leave me, leave me. But in the end, his friend prevailed. He said, just, we'll just go offer our obeisances and sit with him for two minutes, then we can leave. So, Abhay Charan finally agreed. They both came on the terrace and Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati was sitting with some of his disciples and Abhay Charan Day, he was trained by his father from childhood that whenever you see a Vaishnava saint, you have to offer your obeisances. So as was customary, they both offered their prostrated dandavats. As they were rising, Bhakti Siddhan suddenly said, you are both well-educated gentlemen. Why don't you preach this message of Bhagavad Gita as was preached by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu throughout the English speaking world? Now Abhay Charan was totally surprised. He was more than surprised. He was actually, he became very aggressive. He said, who is going to listen to your arguments? Who is going to listen to this Bhagavad Gita? Today India is under British rule. We are not independent. So what is the use of this Gita? So actually, as it is said in the scriptures, that one should humbly inquire from the spiritual master and one should serve him. So, Prabhupada, at that time he had inquired, Abhay Charan, he had actually inquired, he said, what is the use of this Bhagavad Gita? At that time, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati, in his usual very grave manner, he said, there is no problem in this world except lack of Krishna consciousness. He says, everything is there and 
no amount of preparation or no amount of prosperity these words really entered deep into abhay charan's heart at that time he was a follower of gandhi at his beck and call he had rejected his ba degree so he was a follower of this swadeshi movement he was wearing the khadi dress so he was really thinking that when india is free then we can go and distribute this knowledge then only people will really be benefited but this person here was saying it is all nonsense unless you really become god conscious yourself how can you benefit others so after so many years prabhupad once he was giving a lecture on the vyas puja day of his guru maharaj and he was saying that actually i was very uh, i had my own views about how india should make progress how we should make this spiritual knowledge available but on that day my guru maharaj he defeated me and because he defeated me i was so happy from within it appeared that a big load was removed from my heart a big burden was removed from my heart so he said at that very moment i had accepted him as my spiritual master i thought that this this movement of lord chaitanya is and is in very very able hands he is a really a very great sadhu so this is the way we understand that shila prabhupad by his own example he totally dedicated his life it was not that his guru maharaj he called him and he said now i am going to give you the mission of your life which is going to make you famous which is going to be a very great mission no just one casual remark he just said you are educated you know english so why don't you preach in english prabhupad took that message as his life and soul so here it is said that inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination for spiritual understanding unless there is submission and service inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective many people like to ask questions but mainly the questions are asked just to test the knowledge of the guru they just want to know okay what are your views on spiritual life or what are your views on what is god now these kind of inquiries if your heart and soul is not into them what how will they benefit you so just inquiries are not at all encouraged inquiries should be supported by the desire to render service so these great acharyas in their own life they show how we should inquire and how we should render service in fact hearing from your spiritual master is so important that prabhupad himself was used to say unless you hear how will you speak it so happened that one day bhakti siddhan saraswati he was taking all his disciples and so many other people devotees on a circumambulating tour a parikrama of prindavan and they were camping in a village called koshi at that time it was about to uh, night was about to fall and he started a lecture after one hours after one hour many people left two hours some more left after three hours many of the sanyasis and disciples they had to do some work somebody had to tend some service or other somebody had to make some arrangements so they also left after about 4 hours shila prabhupad was the only one who was just sitting very patiently below his spiritual master's seat and very intently hearing so bhakti siddhan saraswati when he was told that this person is abhay charan day and he is re- regularly hearing from you so bhakti siddhan saraswati remarked yes yes i know him i know that he always likes to hear he never goes away so that is the basic qualification proper was saying that i would just love to hear my guru maharaj speak he would speak with such force such clarity that i would just think that 
let this message go deep into my heart. So therefore Prabhupada advises, one must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master and when he sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. The spiritual master, when he blesses, doesn't mean that he has to have, he has something of his own. It is said that the spiritual master is just like a peon or a postman. A postman may give you a check for one lakh rupees. He just sees this is an envelope and on his envelope your name is written. So only thing he has to do is just give you your check. He is not the source of the check. When we say his divine grace, what does it mean? His divine grace doesn't mean that the spiritual master's grace. Of course, we see the grace coming through him, but he understands in his heart that this grace is coming from the Lord, but it is coming through my spiritual master. Therefore, even when the Lord enacts his pastimes, as Lord Ramchandra, he goes to Vasishta Muni, as Lord Krishna, he goes to Sandipani Muni and as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he goes to Ishwara Puri. In fact, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a very special incarnation. In all the previous incarnations, the Supreme Personality, he has a definite mission. He has to establish his identity as the Supreme. But in Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's case, here the Lord has come in the form of his own devotee. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he has, he showed that he has such tremendous capacity for mental speculation, for dry argument. All these things which we have, we already saw before, these things are very detrimental to spiritual life. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibited them in full. In fact, at that time, which must be in the 15th century, 16th century, West Bengal, Bengal, especially Navadvip, that area was full of so many pandits, so many nyayaikas, so many smart brahmans, that devotion to God or chanting the holy names of God was considered to be something terribly, terribly subordinate. No one liked these activities. There was a devotee called Kholavacha Sridhar. He and Advaita Acharya, Srivas Pandit, they would all engage in this congregation chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. And they would have these kirtans at night. And all these neighborhood people, they would think, why are these people crying out all night? Don't they have food? Are they feeling so hungry that this Lord is not giving them food enough? And they would actually come and approach them in the morning and say, take this food, but stop this crying. What is the use of this chanting? So these devotees would feel so sorry that all this mental speculation, all this argument, this is like beating dry husk. A grain has a husk surrounding it. If you take away the grain and if you beat the empty husk, the only reward you get gain is the trouble you undertake. So therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he advented himself in the beginning years, when he was called Nimai Pandit, he was such a great scholar. In fact, he would meet anybody on the street and he would say, okay, what does your Gautama Rushi say? What does your Kanada Muni would say? Just, just tell me anything. Just tell me what you know about grammar. Just tell me know what you about logic. And that person would say something. And with lightning speed, Nimai Pandit would defeat him. Totally in his own realm of knowledge. And that person would say, yeah, actually what you say is correct. And then Nimai Pandit would refute his own statement saying no what I said was wrong so that person would be amazed 
how can this boy just 14 16 years how can he have such knowledge and then he would refute the same statement which he made earlier no this is wrong this is correct and then they would be confused they say actually we don't know what to say to you we are we are actually confused so all the big big great pandits they would feel amazed seeing at this boy and all the devotees they would feel if at all he becomes a devotee of krishna how nice it would be but and they would ask him why don't you chant the name of krishna and he would say actually he con- he confided to some devotees he said very soon i will leave all this nonsense and i would chant the name with such fervor with such dedication that that will flood the whole of bengal actually at that time there was a pandit his name was keshav kashmiri he used to call himself dig vijay dig means direction vijay means the conqueror he claimed that he can conquer all the directions he used to go to all the big pandits in any small village or a small state or a kingdom and say who can challenge me and if somebody can say that okay i'll challenge you he used to defeat him in in minutes and would tell him now you have to sign this certificate that keshav kashmiri has defeated me and i accept him as my lord and master and thus he would go to all the villages and one day he heard that there is a big pandit a big scholar called nimai pandit who is in bengal so i should like to go and see what kind of knowledge he has the moment the people the pandits of navadeep heard that nimai to kashmir keshav kashmir is coming some of them said well actually my daughter's marriage is now to be held in orissa so i have to go there somebody said i have to see my relative who is sick and dying i have to see him there so by giving all kinds of flimsy excuses most of them fled those who were remaining they said actually let nimai pandit face the kashmiri first if he gets defeated there is no problem because he is a boy and if he wins somehow or other actually it will increase our own prestige because if such a mere boy if he can defeat keshav kashmiri then how great would be the pandits so saying they agreed that let nimai pandit face the scholar first so as keshav kashmiri was coming along the road he saw under the tree there was a small boy just 14 to 16 years years old but he was very effulgent and he was talking to some students and he asked who is nimai pandit and they thought what kind of funny question is this almost everyone knew who is nimai pandit so he was saying why don't you answer me who is nimai pandit so then nimai pandit very humbly said my name is nimai pandit actually people call me pandit but i am not a pandit so what can i do for you so he said ah so you are the nimai pandit i think i would like to have a debate with you so he said actually i don't know anything but if you want you can we can start so he said okay what should i do the ganges was just flowing nearby so nimai pandit requested why don't you describe this ganges river and with lightning speed this keshav kashmiri he delivered 100 impromptu verses 100 verses describing the origin of the ganges the the way it flows so many metaphors and so many similes and so many figures of speech and he said so what do you make of this nimai pandit was very grave very silent and he said actually these verses are very nice actually only someone who has the blessings of saraswati can do this but there is a small hitch the 67th verse has a fault it has five faults and it has five ornaments ornaments means those uh, figures of speech which decorate a verse in poetry and he got so angry he says what nonsense you are speaking there is no fault in any of the verses he said please sir try to understand you just said 
you use the word Bhavani Bhartu. That means, Bhavani means the wife of Lord Shiva. So, Bhavani Bhartu means the husband of the wife of Lord Shiva. What does this mean? Does this mean that Lord, that Goddess Parvati is unchaste? She is the most chaste woman. This is a fault. And this time, this Keshav Kashmiri got flabbergasted. He didn't know what to do. And actually, Nimai Pandit said, not only with this verse, all the verses contain so many faults, unlimited faults. If you want, I can describe them. And this time he said, he got a shock of his life. So he went back, he went to his room and he started worshipping his goddess Saraswati. He said, why did you defeat me? You had given me this blessing that no one except the Lord himself can defeat me. So why did you defeat me today? And as he lay on the ground, totally exhausted, she came in his dream and said, actually, he is the Lord whom I worship. So why are you so angry? Why do you feel dejected? This is the Supreme Lord himself who has come in his most munificent golden avatar. So, tomorrow you can go and just fall at his feet. So the next day, Keshav Kashmiri came and he really totally surrendered at Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's feet. So in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as Nimai Pandit, he showed that mental speculation and dry arguments are of no avail whatsoever. They can never, never help you. And one day, he said, I have to go to Gaya to offer oblations to my deceased father. And there, just by the excuse of doing the Shraddha ceremony for his father, he went and met Ishwar Puri, who was his spiritual master. And Ishwar Puri, he initiated him in the chanting of the holy name, the Maha Mantra. And after that, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed that only by the grace of Guru can you really make some progress in spiritual life. He actually was condemned by some of the sannyasis in Benares. They say, you are a sannyasi. Your only job is to study the Vedanta Sutra. Why are you chanting? Why are you dancing? So Mahaprabhu humbly replied. He said, my spiritual master said, you are such a fool that you will not understand this Vedanta Sutra. The only thing you can do is chant this Mahamantra. And that's what I am doing. Similarly, we find that all these great Acharyas, they have put so much faith in the order of their spiritual master. In fact, Srila Prabhupada describes that one day he was distributing some magazines in the streets of old Delhi. And he was giving these magazines from person to person. He went to a postman and he said, please take this magazine, it's very nice. It can really show you the way back home, back to Godhead. And that postman said, actually you know, people don't like to read these small magazines. If you write a book, that is some substantial work. People don't throw away books. And Prabhupada said, I knew this was my Guru Maharaj speaking. He actually wanted that I should write some literature. So, now he is speaking to this person. And immediately, he started his work of writing this commentary on the Gita, on the Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, Prabhupada used to say, I never feel separation from my Guru Maharaj. Never do I feel that he has forsaken me or he has left. In fact, Prabhupada says, even the living entity never dies. So all these great Acharyas who are Nitya Siddhas, ever liberated souls, how can they die? A Vaishnava never dies. So they all are living in the form of their sound representation. So, association with a spiritual master can be had in two different aspects. One is called Vapu and one is called Vani. Vapu means the body. Vani means the speech or the words. So, associating with a guru physically may not be possible all the time because the body is subject to the laws of material nature. It has to die one day. But association with the words 
or association with the instructions of the spiritual master it can never fail so propa said my spiritual master always is with me by his instructions so therefore propa writes here that one should not only hear submissively from the spiritual master but one must also get a clear understanding from him and this understanding you get in submission and service and inquiries a bona fide spiritual master is by nature very kind toward the disciple therefore when the student is submissive and is always ready to render service the reciprocation of knowledge and inquiries becomes perfect in fact when prabhupad took this journey from india to america he saw some students one person saw him and he said can i come and sit for your at your classes he said why not that person eventually became his disciple and he said the very same ship which shila prabhupad took from india to america was the same ship used by that person to come from america to india so prabhupad went to america in that ship that same ship brought some people some americans from america to india they went to calcutta they went to haridwar they went to rishikesh badrinath kedarnath they were all searching for a guru they couldn't find anybody and they frustrated they all came back to the to america and then they found that the one whom they were searching was just living next the next street so prabhupad said actually you never have to search your guru the moment your desire is manifested your desire is ripe krishna sends to the guru because we find that not a single thing in this world is far away from the place where it is needed in fact krishna makes that all the material things which are needed are just right next to you similarly the case is spiritual things but unfortunately in this dark age of kali this dark age of quarrel and hypocrisy people don't know what to desire and therefore we just desire so many things for our own sense gratification in fact people think that there can be a guru for sir teaching music or teaching swimming or teaching running or teaching chess or whatever they there cannot be gurus like that a guru means guru means heavy the little meaning of the word guru means heavy heavy by what heavy by his realization and therefore the upanishads advise tasmad gurum prapadyeta jigyasu shreya uttamam you have tasmad gurum prapadyeta jigyasu shreya uttamam your inquiry should be not that how i can improve my spiritual life somebody says swami ji please bless me why so that i can improve my business or i can improve my married life or i can improve my this i can improve my that jigyasu shreya uttamam your inquiry should be how i can improve my spiritual life uttama tama means darkness this world is by nature dark therefore your inquiry should be how i can attain that spiritual awareness that spiritual existence only for that point your spiritual inquiry should be directed shamit prani shrotriyam brahmanishtam the the spiritual master should be the disciple should be brahmanishtam he should need that kind of existence so in short we just summarize what we learned today in this verse from the fourth chapter 34th verse krishna is advising yad arjuna if you want to learn the truth you have to approach a spiritual master two things are required inquire from him submissively and render service unto him the self realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth so are there any questions the nagra affects our life are they part of the spiritual life 
his question is these nine planets they affect our life so is this spiritual life actually in this universe we are not cut off from any single point we are affected by everything which is around us so it's a fact that these planets can influence your life but they cannot influence your spiritual life spiritual life means you take your life from the influence of these other factors and you place your life in the influence of lord krishna's personal energy therefore those who don't place themselves at krishna's lotus feet they are called duratmas krishna says mahatmanas tu mam partha daivim prakrutim ashrita bhajanti ananya manaso they bhajanti ananya manaso so in order to get away from the influence of this navagras you have to put yourself under the influence of lord krishna's personal energy that is devotional service so it may be a fact that somebody may say or oh, because this planet is not good my business is suffering or my family life is suffering but the only sure remedy is if you take to devotional service they will stop influencing you there is no need to worry about anything it is just like a jailer or a jail warden he may be he may be flogging or he may be beating a criminal but if you take yourself out of jail and you obey the law of the state then the jail warden no longer troubles you because you have done something and you have put yourself under the influence of the jail person the superintendent therefore he is beating you but if you if you obey all the laws if you behave nicely you take yourself out of the jail and he no longer influences you hari krishna what do we actually mean by rendering service well rendering service means obedience prabhupad used to give an example that if the guru says bring me a glass of water and if you think a glass of water is very ordinary thing i should give him a glass of milk so you say actually milk i have brought milk for you but he says i want water so when he says i want water you give him a glass of water that is service that is obedience so just trying to be a obedient person is rendering service whatever his instructions are you try to obey them in your own life that is service i had no desire to have a guru i didn't know anything about spiritual life at all so how did i i get the association of a guru well we may we may not know exactly why we come in contact with the devotees but actually the vaishnav the real sadhu he is so compassionate that by his own mercy he extends his realm of operations and he wants to give pure love shri shri radha gopinath ki jai